Hi everyone, welcome back to Switch Up and to a video that you've been asking for for a long time where we're going to look at our most relaxing games. Yeah, we've got 10 games to talk about as well as some honourable mentions. Some in the honourable mentions list may seem more obvious, but that's exactly why they're there. We've wanted to highlight, you know, some, some games you may not expect to hear and then we'll, we'll mention some more obvious ones towards the end. So what are the most relaxing games on Switch? Well, let's find out. First up, we just wanted to talk about a book that was sent to us called The Most Relaxing Video Games from Ryan Janes. And as the title suggests, it features relaxing games from across multiple platforms. Yep, it has games going back to the Super Nintendo all the way up to PS5 with over 50 games highlighted. And this was kind of the inspiration for this video. It's one that we've been asked for for a while, but having a flick through this has uh, kind of given us that inspiration to, to make this video. And some of the games we are going to mention are in this book, as well as the rest obviously being our own picks. Now there's no affiliation here, he's literally just sent his books across and said, you know, show it if you want to show it, and uh, we want to show it. There are links down in the description if you want to go support him. Uh, I know it's something that he's kind of a bit of a passion project made himself, and there's you can get it on Amazon as well, I believe. Yeah, thank you very much to sending it for us. It's a good read, actually. We are having a flick through it earlier, as well as obviously the games themselves. There's a few little facts in there and other little bits of information that you might enjoy. And as Mark said, if you do want to support the author, please do look at the links below. Okay, first up then on our list, we're going to start with The Tourist. Now, you might remember this came from Shinen Multimedia, the same people who bought us the very not relaxing Fast RMX. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very different sort of game, this one. Totally. This one's all centered around the idea of a vacation. So even down to the art style, everything about it's quite dreamy. You move around on a little rowboat. And while some of the subject matter isn't that relaxing, you know, there's a few boss fights in there and stuff. I think, um, the idea of this list is you can find those really relaxing elements, isn't it? Yeah, we've picked games where either they are just relaxing no matter how you try and spin it, or they have ways that you can escape the parts you don't want to do and just go off and do your own thing. If it's a story game that has relaxing elements, but then you know you have to sit for a bit that's not quite so, we haven't included it, if that makes sense. Yeah, so with this one, there are lots of side activities, so you can spend time if you want, completely leave the main game and just surf, or as I say, row to the different islands and do, do those little things like going into the arcades and stuff like that. There's loads in here. Very relaxing game, I enjoyed it immensely. So yeah, consider checking that one out. Next thing we have Untitled Goose Game. Now this is most certainly one that, that was in the book we mentioned earlier, it's actually on the front cover. And uh, I'm, I'm pleased it was because it's a game I, I'd almost forgotten about. And I don't mean that negatively against the game because I, I really enjoyed playing it when I did complete it. But it's just such a whimsical game, mm. so much fun. And again, just very relaxing. I played it through twice actually, once with my wife and once with my daughter. And we just had you know so much fun completing the objectives that you have, but sometimes just forgetting all about those and just having a bit of uh, Causing a bit of mayhem, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's funny because I think uh, it's relaxing for everyone, uh, you know, other than the people that you're terrorising. Yeah, yeah. And that's what makes it so relaxing because <laughs> it's not you that's being terrorised. So it's fun just to uh, be this little crazy goose and, and go on this uh, whimsical adventure. But a really nice game, lovely little art style to it mm. as well. And yeah, worth worth playing this one. Yeah, really good. And as Glenn mentioned, it has co-op, which they added in after launch, didn't they? They did, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. All right, next up then, very obvious I think in this list, but it has to be mentioned, it's a short hike. Now, as the title suggests, and I've said that so many times, it's one of those, you know you say these lines and you're like, oh my word, I remember yeah. saying that many times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this one is all about moving your way to the top of a mountain and with the main character. Again, doing little activities as you go along and not really worrying about that end destination. You're just doing stuff. Mm. You know, like go along, you see someone playing tennis. Or oh, it's a version of tennis. I can't even remember what you're knocking over that. It might be volleyball or something. Oh, okay, right. Just join in. There's like climbing frame. Just do a bit of climbing. It's one of those. You just don't really care about reaching the end. Yeah. You know, yeah. and it is you could speed through it, but that's not the point. It's just, just chilling your way through. It helps that it runs so smoothly. Mm. You know, you're looking at 60 frames per second. It's, it's nice and silky. And it's got a good soundtrack as well. It also does something I think a lot of games forget about, which is to focus on environment environmental sound right like you hear the wind whipping as you yeah, get higher yeah. in the mountain and stuff like that so yeah I, I really enjoyed this one very short quite cheap and uh, nice and relaxing nice 
Then we've got New Pokemon Snap. Now, this is a game that I played through to completion, and it's one of those where if you're, you mentioned it just now, if you're just plowing through it to get to an end goal, it can become maybe a little repetitive, mm. but if you if you play it for the experience and you just take in what's around you, it's actually very enjoyable and, and definitely relaxing. You know, as you make your way through each environment, you're kind of on rails, taking photos of each of the different Pokemon and obviously the uh, the crux of the game is trying to make them appear by by enticing them out to get that perfect photo. Right, okay. But it's just the world that you kind of move through as you're taking these photos. It's lovely to, to see, you know? I didn't realise this one was on rails. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it's almost as if you were on a safari. Oh, nice. If you imagine and you're in that car, say, and you're, you're kind of going along taking those photos. So there is that slight timed element to it where you yeah. have only a split second to take the photo. But again, if you just remove any sort of uh, feeling of wanting to achieve anything and just enjoy the ride mm. it's very relaxing really nice game and you do have the original i believe on the n64 online app as well okay if you'd prefer to play that one next up then i want to talk about the eastward dlc that just came out so they introduced essentially a farming sim into eastward i think it naturally just really suits that style of game mm -hmm. you know that art style just it just suits it so well and it's not a stressful one so that you won't find like tons of deadlines things that are forcing you into worrying about yeah. planting things you know it's it's very relaxed pace but also still has quite a, an interesting story in there that you can completely ignore right and i think yeah. that's a, one of the elements for me that made it relaxing because i'm not really too fussed in farming sims yeah. i want to just plant stuff yeah yeah. You know, and then go about doing whatnot. What's cool here is the more you do, the more you'll get back in terms of the people in that town will open up new shops and stuff and then give you more um, avenues for planting stuff. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's a nice one. I, I think, I'm trying to think if there's anything to stand out. Obviously, we will in our honorable mentions talk about things like Stardew Valley. But for me, this feels like it could have been like Stardew 2. You know, it still has those elements where you're trying to please people in the town. Um, but it's just in the Eastwood universe. There's not much more to say about it. If you like that, if you like the idea of it, I think you'll really enjoy this. I think for me, that's the most important thing about farm life sims mm. is that the world around you has to, time has to almost stop and let you pick it up when you feel like it. And any game that doesn't want to do that, it loses that element. You know, like, uh, is it Story of Seasons? I think it's A Wonderful Life. Yeah. I think it's that one where you, you have to be married by the end of the first season, otherwise you, but the game basically ends. You know, like that, that defies the whole point of these sort of games. You should, if you want to play for 10 seasons and then finally get, you know, it should let you take it at your own pace. So it's good to see that this one does that. Yeah, absolutely. And also it doesn't do the annoying things of like forcing you go to bed, to go to bed. Uh, yeah. You know, or like make, knocking you unconscious. It just kind of makes you walk slow. Right. Like okay. puff and stuff. Oh, so okay. you, you know, you naturally do that. I think that's quite a nice solution to that problem. So next up we've got Mario Maker. Yeah, Super Mario Maker 2 we have on the Switch. Now, at the start we kind of said that, you know, it's about elements sometimes of, of games. Mm. So with this one for me, it's obviously making your own levels. If you were to play some of the creations people have come up with, I'm sure you get very stressed because some of them are, are very difficult. But um, just in terms of making levels and how accessible this game makes making levels, yeah. it's very, very relaxing and it's a lot of fun, you know, and just trying out your own creations and then that proud moment when you have a working level mm. that you can upload and have other people try and then you get you know the nice comments you get back about it and what have you you know what there's something to be said for um creation versus consumption mm. they say like in your everyday life and play and everything you have to balance them out yeah. and if you don't one of them becomes um almost toxic you know like you can't do it anymore and that's a really good example for gaming if you're just consuming consuming yeah. all the time yeah the game has no creative element i think you can very easily begin to burn out with games on in general yeah i think that's a good point actually and i don't think you're ever too old no. to change the balance no. and i go i mentioned lego a lot because it is my other passion in life hobby wise and i was always about building sets pre you know sets mm. you buy from the shop and about a year ago i started to make my own models and uh, maybe i'll flash a few up on screen actually yeah, of some yeah. of the ones i've made and the, the satisfaction that you gain from it it's incredible like yeah. I, and I, I you know coming on 40 at the time and i probably wouldn't have thought i'd be able to do it now yeah. i'm too old for that but you're not you know and you find you get more satisfaction than a pre-made model oh 100 percent. yeah yeah 100 and seeing your improvement as you make more yeah it's lovely so moving back to gaming for that reason i think super mario maker can be quite a uh, cathartic absolutely and it does apply actually to a lot of this list things like the farming sims where you're making the decisions on where you place things and yeah yeah i guess it's it's intrinsic to a lot of these relaxing games 
Then we've got an interesting one actually. It's from the N64 online app and it's Pilot Wings. Yes, yeah, so we mentioned the, the app a minute ago with Pokemon Snap. There isn't really a new version of Pilot Wings, certainly not an official version at least, on the on the Switch anyway. For me, Pilot Wings is is one of the most relaxing games I'd ever played. <laughs> but again, I do have to caveat that with saying if you're just doing the missions and you're trying to land a <laughs> you know a, a gyrocopter at speed or you're trying to land on a target with a, a jetpack, that can be stressful. Yeah. But when you start to unlock the missions where you're just flying around in the say the uh, the air glider the paraglider, whatever you call it, and uh, taking photos, and you're starting to unlock these new areas. There's one that's based on America, I think it's called like Little States or something, mm. and you see the little Easter eggs and the, the famous buildings being Nintendoized. Yeah. It's lovely, and the music is, is really relaxing as well. I was gonna say, Glenn was playing a little bit of this earlier on, and it's not one that I have a big history of, but he was like, oh, just listen to this, and he just showed me a little ca uh, a snapshot there, and that snapshot, I think, is all you need to know. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, and I, I think a lot of these games, whereas we haven't mentioned music much, you'll probably find that's a, yeah. a similar theme, that they have that, that calming nature to them that really makes the gameplay more relaxing as a result. Then more recently on the Nintendo Switch, um, a game called Lake came out. Now this originally came out on, I believe it was an Xbox, I had it on Game Pass, and you're essentially playing as someone that's lived and worked in a big city who then goes back to their hometown and takes over, I think it's from their father, um, I don't know if they're on a SPAC or what's going on. You know, mm. I, don't know, I can't remember what the premise is. But you take over from, and they're a post person. I guess they're a postman and you, you take on the role of postwoman. And you're just driving around the town of, of Lake, which is around the lake, as the title <laughs> suggests. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, delivering people's mail and then there's fetch questy bits in there and there's a bit of um, kind of adventure game mechanics. But it's just the driving round. It's, it's done in a very relaxed way, a very, here's your shift, go and do it, which it's kind of strange because you can't imagine like a, a normal postman being nice and chilled and relaxed. Mm. I guess there's differences, isn't there? Like if you're late, you're going to get told off and stuff. <laughs> yeah. But here, it's yeah, it's just just drive. You, you, you've got different um, what are they called? Groups of houses, different um, estates. Estates. Yeah, we yeah. called them estates here in America. Yeah. They'd be, I don't know, like they've been ever estates today. They're probably thinking, what on earth's an estate? Yeah, tell us what's what's the, yeah. the noun for a collection of <laughs> of houses? Like suburbs. Possibly, yeah. Something like that. Quite possibly. Yeah, so you just, you've got this large open map to to work around. You have like your locals as well and you get into a bit of a routine. So you'd be like, I'm off to see Bob. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if there is a Bob. It might be. It might be, you should be. <laughs> so yeah, the lake is another one that Glenn mentioned about the music there. That's what it does really well. Mm. So as you drive and you've got this playing in the background, it's, you kind of forget you're playing a game. Yeah. There's another element of these relaxing games that I think kind of an intangible thing that makes them so relaxing. I think also there's there's something to be said for how relaxing routine is. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Like as much as we try to escape routine by playing games mm -hmm. and you want that escapism of being a, a wizard and fighting a dragon, sometimes sticking to a routine where there's no consequence yeah. is actually quite relaxing. You've hit the nail on the head there, I think. <laughs> yeah, because routine's comforting. Yeah. Humans love routine, don't they? Love to be able to know what's coming and they don't like change. Mm. All right, I'm thinking. I'm thinking on a deeper level now. <laughs> nice one. Okay, after that then is a game called Islanders. Now Islanders is so simple. It's very, very cheap, dirt cheap in fact, um, but it's not a dirty product. Well, that's, that's, not at all. That's good to know. <laughs> Although you do manipulate dirt to create islands. So it technically it is dirty. Well it is. Filthy. Filthy. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, the premise goes that you have this um, island, it's a bit like a puzzle game, and you place your pieces down and certain ones in proximity to others will gain you more points, which then means you can get more pieces that you put down. But it's very chill, mm. like you're not really thinking, you're not stressing, like, oh no, I've got to put this in the right, you're just putting stuff, mm. you know, you're just like, let's stick a load of stuff there, oh that worked, happy days, what about over there, oh that worked as well. <laughs> Um, and then you unlock new stages. On the one hand, it does have a bit of um, a you must reach this score element. Right. But for some reason, I didn't find it at all stressful. Yeah, yeah. At all. And there's probably some form of free play mode or something. But yeah, it's just, I think it's because it doesn't emphasize that. All it emphasizes is, hey, look, here's a new piece. Where do you want to put that? Mm. And then you see your colonies building. And in fact, a lot of like the strategy games, civilization, all of that, in free play modes, they can be quite relaxing. Yeah, there's a game actually, I'll, I'll say it here rather than putting the honorable yeah. mentions, but it's called Medoris R. And it's basically about fitting rooms into a, a floor space. Okay. So like whole rooms, you know? And again, there's no real consequence for getting it wrong. It's mm. just, you know, you times you, but no real, you're not, you don't feel under pressure. And it reminds me from what you said of, of that game. And again, just very relaxing, you know? Yeah. And again, relatively cheap from what I remember. These, these, these little games you find sometimes mm. are just, 
they're, they're time killers, but not in a negative way no. where they're wasting your time. You just feel satisfied with a little bit of time you spent with them, you know? Completely. The last one then, before we have a look at the honourable mentions, and that will have a lot of games that you know in it, we've got Abzu. Now, this was essentially one walking simulator set underwater. Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Which sounds weird, doesn't it? It's a swimming simulator. Swimming simulator, yeah. <laughs> you can do things like grab onto the backs of fishes and stuff and just go around for no reason. Yeah. It didn't, didn't progress you in the story, it just, it was nice. Yeah, yeah, it's... The only thing about this one is, um, for me at least, it was it, it was a little too linear mm. in terms of I would have liked maybe every so often to have a more open area where you could just explore for a while yeah. and then go on and do the next task, you know. Mm. But in terms of what you're seeing as you go along, it's most certainly relaxing. It's such a lovely environment. And um, I think it doesn't take long to finish, maybe about three hours. If that, yeah. If that, yeah, it doesn't take very long. It's kind of like those... You know, like Journey, yeah. Flowers, it's one of those, but obviously set underwater. So if you just want something that you can just tick along with and almost drift off while you're playing it, it's, it definitely uh, ticks those boxes. All right, on to some honourable mentions, and it's honourable and a bit obvious yeah. in, in some of them, you know, which yeah. is why they've not got their own dedicated sections. Uh, things like Minecraft, um, you can you can escape in that world for thousands of hours and just build and, and relax and it does have quite relaxing music actually. Tetris is another one. Tetris is, yeah, possibly contentious in terms of some people will find it very stressful. <laughs> I mean, I've been playing Tetris since the Game Boy and, and it, I just find it so cathartic mm. to, 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 to drop those, you know, and, and, and create Tetrises and, and try to uh, to play to a point where you're making multiple Tetrises and, and that's the way you play and it almost you, it becomes like a psychedelic, yeah. you know, you, you drift away and you, you're just doing it on auto pilot and I don't really care when I lose it's not the point you know it was just playing for a while so I, I would say Tetris for sure yeah things like uh, Breath of the Wild as well when yeah. you're actually you know in your downtime in that game it was very relaxing yeah when you just go off and explore climb mountains uh, you know f uh, not flow glide is what I want yeah, yeah all that stuff if you're doing all that you can lose hours in in this game you know, it's, it's a very obvious one, isn't it? And uh, we wanted to ded dedicate some time to, to other games, but it certainly can be one of the most relaxing experiences if you're playing it for relaxation. Yeah, and I know that loads of people are going to mention Stardew Valley, you know, Stardew Valley and Animal Crossing, those kind of together mm -hmm. would be seen as amazingly relaxing yeah, sim life. Exactly. Any of those farm life, sim life games, you know, pick your poison, there's so many of them. <laughs> and please do feel free to nominate any others that you enjoy playing. I, I mentioned the other day, funny enough, Friends of Mineral Town being one of mine. But anything like that, as long as it lets you go at your own pace. Like mm. I mentioned, there is that one, that wonderful life one that doesn't do that, which was odd. But otherwise, yeah, they're very relaxing. Uh, you said Pick Cross. Yeah, Pick Cross is a, like a puzzle game, isn't it? Where you you have to make a picture right. by almost like chipping away at the, the blocks in front of you. Okay. And you have to kind of use um, the numbers by the side of the grid to uh, ascertain which blocks you can chip away at oh, to okay. create the picture. Again, I know people that spend hours, mm. I mean, my wife is one of them actually, he spends hours of time on these. Once they've completed a the puzzle, they'll go back and try and do it without any mistakes. And, you know, they just get, again, get into that mindset of just playing it on autopilot almost, you know? It's like that flow state, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly that. There's a few others on our on our honorable mentions, things like Cozy Grove, Spin Tires, which we've just talked about so many times. Yeah. I think if you don't know about those, go check out their dedicated videos, which there are on the channel. Well, I will mention just before we go, actually, <laughs> I, I, I hesitate to put this on the list. Yeah. This is one of the most relaxing games I've played on the Switch. It's called Sparkle 2, but I don't think it's a particularly good game. Right. Like the actual game. <laughs> It's a bit pointless, okay. But you just play as this little creature, and, and the more like um, I don't know, like you're collecting these little dots up, and it's like uh, almost like DNA, and then it evolves you. Yeah. And it's very psychedelic, and it's very calming, and it's nice to see the changes that happen as as you collect these dots. There's nothing to it. No. But if you just want to again be in that flow of playing, yeah. Yeah, maybe maybe give it a look, but just don't expect the earth, you know. No. And and if there was a kids' pick, it would probably be Spiritfarer because Bella loves cats. Okay. Yeah. And I know a lot of people find it's quite relaxing yeah this is one that we again probably would have made the actual list list yeah. but neither of us have put enough time in to get to that part where it's as relaxing yeah. as we know it can be so it's in there as a, an honorable mention but from what we've heard and you know seen to a small extent mm. lovely game very uh very calming with a very deep meaning and message to it, you know? So that's it. Those are our most relaxing games. Let us know yours down in the comments. A big thank you to all of you that follow the channel. If you want to save money on your physicals, your digital purchases, or things like controllers, there are links and savings down in the description. A quick thank you to our patrons and our channel members for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming.
Thank you to those of you that have stayed behind to have a look at the models that I've built. So this was the first model I ever built. This is a bowling alley. This next one is like a, a high street where you've got a couple of stores and obviously like an apartment above. There's an ice cream shop. We'll look at them in more detail in a moment. This is a coffee shop, very much like something like Costa's. We go to Costa quite a lot, my wife and I and my kids. So uh, yeah, I decided to build a coffee shop. There's just a look at the front. And again, as I say, we'll look inside in more detail in a moment. So this is the bowling alley. This was the first one I ever built. And uh, this top floor, as you'll see, is the arcade section. So inside we've got a few machines as well as some air hockey there and like a bar in the side there selling drinks and whatnot, snacks. And there's like a Dance Dance Revolution game on the right there. Um, you might be able to see just through the window. Yeah, this was the first model I ever built. And I, I started off by buying a pre-existing set, which was a bowling alley. And obviously you can see the floor here with those in. And I just took those bowling alley elements and then kind of built the rest of it myself off that. And that gave me the confidence to keep going. And this was a... I think it was the third one I done. I think I did the coffee shop next. So this is the apartment or the flat upstairs. Give a, a closer look in a minute. If you see this one actually breaks apart, they're all modular, but in two sections. So you have the bedroom there and like a, a, a kitchen. It's like a studio flat. And then you have like a front room area and you'll see there those uh, models. She's actually one from the grabber machine outside the arcade. So I like to build some little stories like that within my, my models. And these are the, the shops downstairs. So we saw the ice cream shop earlier. There it is again. And uh, this was actually an ice cream truck set that you could buy, an official set that I then turned into a shop with that window at the front there that I, in a moment, try to uh, show opening and closing, but I do knock the figures out of the way. But yeah, this was an ice cream van. And I, I took the elements such as that sliding window and obviously the sticker elements you can see there and turned it into a shop, a full-blown shop. And the shop next to it that you'll see in a moment as I move across is like a, a Chinese uh, restaurant, more, more a takeaway than a restaurant. So obviously you have the counter there and then the kitchen there with the chef preparing the meals. And then we move on to that coffee shop. So this was actually quite an easy one to build. This was straight off the back of that first one. I just had uh, some inspiration. A lot of it is windows, as you can see, which made it quite easy to get going. Uh, but I think this one turned out quite well. I'm quite happy with this. If you have a look inside, lots of details in terms of the various machines and uh, coffee makers and obviously the, the customers in there. You've got Beast from the X-Men sitting there reading the paper and uh, a couple of the minifigures that you'll see in a moment. Just on the left there were the first two that my wife and I built when we went to the Lego shop together many years ago now before we were married. Uh, and you can build, you give like build a minifigure stands and we built a couple each and they're now in there having a coffee together, which is nice. So these here are not finished yet, as I'm sure you can see. This is a pub called The Earth that I'm building. Very pleased with this one so far. And this one here is like a souvenir shop that I'll talk about more in a moment. But starting with the pub, uh, this is uh, bigger than the other models. Uh, this is called The Wooden Duck, by the way. And there's a little uh, Just Eats man doing his rounds. But yeah, starting with the pub, this is 32 by 48. So this is actually a bigger model. It's on 32 by 48 base plate. And uh, I just need to finish the roof off there and some other bits and bobs. I need to tile the floor in that front room. This is like the flat upstairs. Obviously, if you imagine the landlord of the pub living here. And then inside you have the pub itself. So again, I just need to do some tiling on the floor. I'm just waiting for some bits. This is modeled on a pub I used to go to as a kid many years ago now. You've got the, obviously the darts board there, the bar, a few seats. And then inside here, so again, the roof detaches. Uh, you'll see it's like a pool area. You know, you can play pool. Again, just waiting for some tiles to finish that that pool table off. And there's a, a bathroom up there as well. So yeah, I'm pretty pleased with that one. It's coming on nicely. I do like that one. You've got the telephone box there as well. And this, uh, this one I'm gonna pull across now. So this is a souvenir shop. And the reason I made this is that when we go on holiday, a lot of the time uh, we visit these kind of strange little shops down little cobbled streets. When we go to like seaside resorts here in England, and I wanted to build something like that that's really cramped and you've got all the stuff on tables and what have you. But there's a few little Easter eggs in there as well. Apologies for the dust, the Lego does get very dusty. These ones that aren't finished yet, I keep under the stairs and my stairs are open backed. So unfortunately they do get very dusty. I have to keep dusting them every so often. I'm actually doing that now off camera. But um, what I like about this set is actually it's, a, it's an official set called the Ministry of Magic, a Harry Potter set that I built, uh, I bought a big pardon and re repurposed completely. So I just took the elements like those bay windows and turned them into something that you know I wanted it to be, be in that souvenir shop. But there are a couple of little Easter eggs. So obviously the, the theme itself is quite dear to us because it's from when we go on holiday as a family. But the name The Wooden Duck as well there, 
uh, is something very specific to Lego in that the first toy Lego ever produced was a wooden duck way before they made uh, bricks, obviously plastic bricks. So I, I called the shop the wooden duck and there's the little, uh, the little sign there as well. So yeah, just to look at some sets, uh, I hope you enjoyed this, completely different to what we usually do on the channel. It's just nice to talk about sometimes to be honest. But yeah, uh, please do let me know if you build at all, doesn't have to be Lego, anything at all. Stick it down in the comments section and um, uh, happy gaming, I suppose happy building in this instance.